Hello and welcome to Relevate and today I'm going to talk to you about leads, contacts, accounts and opportunities. A lot of people get really confused about what's got to happen in a CRM and in this presentation I aim to talk about what and why you use each part. So straight away you can see on the front of this uh, presentation we've got a bit of a flow chart diagram here. So just to give you a quick overview, a lead is kind of like the first time someone gets in touch with your business. Then we have the qualification process. Uh, are they qualified? Yes or no. So that's where they're still in that lead stage. So some of the qualifications might be you want to make sure that you get rid of any junk. Anyone that's just sort of clicked on a button somewhere accidentally ended up in your pipeline. Maybe they went, they responded to an ad, didn't mean to, or they just respond to every ad because they just like to and they're not really relevant for your business. So you don't want to spend a lot of time on them. So the best thing you can do is to qualify them or take them out of the process if they're not qualified. Some qualification steps might be that you need to make sure that everyone has a mobile phone number and an email before you progress them to the next stage. So whilst it may seem like you want to get every person to speak to humanly possible, in actual fact, you probably want to try and filter out the ones that aren't worth your time and spend time on the ones that are worth your time. So, qualified, yes or no? If yes, convert to or convert the lead into um, generally probably a few things. So, if a person comes along and you want to save their details for later, maybe they're a supplier, maybe they're just someone who could be a good referrer then you probably want to just convert them into a contact and not really have anything else to do other than that. You can go back, you can search them, you understand who they are. Uh, maybe they've got a company associated with them, in which case you would set up an account. So if you had a, a referral company, then you could have the contact associated with the account. Now, if you're going to have someone who's going to be a customer, maybe if they're an individual, they might start as a contact and an opportunity. Um, and depending on what platform you're in, you may or may not have an account. Um, if they're a business client, then yes, they will have an account and a contact and an opportunity. So let's break these down into a little more detail. So a lead is the top of your funnel. It's the first place that the people arrive into. Um, and, and it's a really just a triage process so you can get rid of the ones that you don't need to spend time on and spend more time with the ones that are good for your business. So do you have the right contact details? As I mentioned with those validation rules. Now you can also gauge interest at this point, have any kind of, uh, you, know, you might need to specify certain criteria before they move forward. You might specify if they're going to buy a loan, do they have a job? Are they on, you know, uh, Centrelink or, or support payments of some kind? That would probably dequalify them or, or take them out of the process immediately. So it could just be a matter of asking those questions and having a checkbox, yes or no. If no, take them out. If yes, uh, oh sorry, in our example, the other way around. So if yes, if they have support payments, then no, they can't afford a loan, so they're not going to progress. Then the account. Okay, so this is the legal entity you're going to be dealing with. This is a basically like a piece of paper or a concept or an idea. So if there is a sole trader, them as their business persona is the account. Them as an individual human being with a pulse is the contact. And that's the difference. So the company is the one who you have a legal relationship with. The individual is the one you have a personal human relationship with. Now, there can be many contacts associated to one company, and this is where it becomes really important to be able to identify the key roles and the key uh, people and partners, the things that they do in those businesses that relate to the account. So you might want to have uh, contacts-related roles uh, that are associated with. So... The individuals that you deal with, these you have conversations with these people, you meet them face to face, uh, and you basically can store information about them so that when you have a conversation, you can remember that their dog broke its leg last week. So next time you see them in, in two months time, you can go, how's that leg healing up for your dog? And they will be amazed at how good you are at remembering things about them. They don't necessarily need to know that you 
went through your your app and you pulled out their contact record and you have a quick scan of the notes before you uh, you went in, walked into the meeting. That way you're empowered with the information. It seems like you picked up the conversation from yesterday, even if you might have dealt with a hundred people that day or that week. Uh, it feels one to one. It feels personal, and you seem on top of everything. So. Each of these people can have different roles. Uh, I encourage you to have a look into the buyer personas and how they relate to different buying roles within a business. They don't all have to be your customers. They can be people that you have met that might be suppliers. Uh, I track my suppliers in there, mostly for, you know, people have different skill sets, particularly if you've got subcontractors and particularly if you're doing things, say, for example, like copywriting or photographer. I've got little tags on people that have different skills. I don't always need them. I don't have a full-time person to do that, but I can find through my list of contacts who can do that. I can apply a rating. I can talk about what jobs they've done before, how that might relate to future jobs. I can also, if they've got more than one skill, I can track that. So if they're a photographer and a copywriter in one, um, and thinking about a contact uh, and in the context of your business specifically, they can be a client, a referral partner, a competitor, all within the one person. And it really just depends on what element of your business you're talking about um, to provide that context. And opportunities. Now, you know one person and one person is can be related to a couple of companies. But the other thing is you can have multiple opportunities with any person or with any company. So it's one of those uh, one-to-many relationship fields and a company helps to make it a little bit clearer. You've got lots of people working for one company and then you've got lots of deals associated with one company. So it helps to track how those interrelationships uh, occur. So an opportunity is the deal. It is the thing you're going to sell. It's not necessarily all of the products because the products make up parts of an opportunity. So you go to someone uh, that you've been talking to and you say, hey, Jerry or Fred or whoever it is, Mary, um, what about buying a uh, widget, a red widget from me? And they say, yep, sounds like a plan. I need one. Um, I actually want two. I want a red one and I want a blue one. So the widgets are the products, but that conversation around buying something is your opportunity or your deal. So each deal has a set of opportunity uh, stages. And in those stages, different things occur. So we reach out in the first instance. That might be a prospecting stage. They say, yeah, look, I'm uh, I'm actually kind of interested. Uh, let's talk about it. So now you're in the de- negotiation stage then maybe they've they've selected the products and then you send a proposal so that's in that contract review phase uh, then they come back and say you know what I think because we're buying two we want to we want a bit of a discount and then you say you know what we can do that so within that stage you might have some rules some um, tasks that you have to complete before you know you might get an approval from a manager to let you give that 10 percent off Maybe there's a validation rule that you can't enter more than 20% off uh, and that's dictated by the system. And this helps businesses to scale and apply the rules to their sales operations so that sales teams aren't just giving discounts away left, right and center to close deals and meet their quota. Because at the end of the day, that really hurts profitability. So opportunities can be applied, uh, can have rules applied to them and can track the Uh, discussion of a deal or an opportunity to make a purchase or sale. Now, processing of your leads, you've got uh, basically six stages. There's the capturing, the scoring and prioritizing. You've got assigning leads to appropriate sales reps because sometimes there might be some criteria that mean that one particular sales rep is better than uh, another for that particular lead. For example, an industry experience or accessibility because they're in a particular region geographically, for example. Um, then converting your leads, nurturing them so so that if they're not ready to buy right now, that they will be hopefully you know, in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Uh, this is usually the case with large expensive items. And lastly, evaluating your lead management process, constantly going back and providing um, feedback to the marketing team to determine whether or not we're actually on the right track. 
So in order to track all these things, these parts moving around, you know, there's, there's other things that can come into it as well. You might be talking about um, an, an asset, you know, you might be talking about um, uh, digital, digital assets, physical assets. Um, you might, be require, you might need to use these things in order to produce a, and push a sale. You know, maybe if you're, you're selling a house, you're going to have different um, parts to selling a house. Not only do you have the owners who are your kind of kind of like your clients, um, you've then got the house itself, which is the uh, the asset that you need to track. Then you've got inspections or open houses, which is an activity related to the asset. Then you've got attendees, uh, which are a multi a multi sort of connected uh, re- uh, entity. The attendees. Um, that go to these showings uh, could go to multiple showings of multiple properties. So you need to think about coming up with an entity relationship diagram that is specific to your business and no two businesses should be the same. That's what helps us create a competitive advantage and help us to stay ahead of the competition. So I hope this has given you a bit more of an idea of how uh, leads, contacts, accounts and opportunities relate to one another. And uh, although I've raised more of a question around entity relationships and what that kind of looks like for your business, I hope you can at least take away the differences between lead, contact and account. And if you've got any questions about how we can work together in diagramming your business flow, your business data, and then being able to optimize the use of that data, then you can always reach out to us at relevate.com.au. We look forward to having a chat. Thank you very much.